Prepare to surface. Prepare to surface, right? Prepare to work. Now prepare to surface. Prepare to surface. All compartments report ready to surface. Very well. Half inch pressure in the boat ready to surface, sir. Very well. Surface ship. Password surface. Now surface, surface, surface. Blow the forward group. Blow the forward group. Blowing the forward group. Blow the after group. Blow the after group. Blowing the after group. Rise on your planes. About to agree up on. Secure the air. Secure the air. Air secure. Very well. Zero your plane. Three, five feet and holding, sir. Very well. Open induction. Open induction. Outboard induction indicates open. I felt I was a real part of the crew. Submariners are a close group, you know. You just can't be in until you've earned your dolphins. I'll tell you, Larry, that was some day. I bet there wasn't a happier guy in the whole Navy. Okay, you earned them. But how did you get to go to Spain? Well, my submarine works out of an advanced operating base in Rota, Spain. So, before my crew finished the two-month patrol, the other crew was flown over from the States to take her out on patrol. My crew went back to the home port in Charleston, South Carolina, for a couple of months of work, rest, and off-crew training. Ah, oh, well, I'd saved some money. I only had a little leave coming. A couple of weeks I took in Spain, though. Well, here's some pictures. Beautiful, great. I've never seen a bullfight. You know something? Being a submariner means a lot more to me than that. It's a great way of life, a world of its own. You work with a good crew and you know that you're doing something that's really important. <laughs> all right, all right, so maybe I'll join up. You ought to start thinking about it. You know you're going to have to do something pretty soon anyway. Sure, you've got that job down at the bank, 
But what are you going to do when Uncle Sam calls? You're right, Bill. And I am thinking about it. But tell me this, uh, how, do you, uh, how do you go about it? Two years ago, I went downtown to the recruiting office, studied all the opportunities that the Navy had to offer. But I liked what the recruiter had to say about the Polaris missile program best. He said that I could get top-notch training when I finished high school, could learn all about modern electronics, things like computers, inertial guidance systems, and missiles. Sounds pretty rough to me. Yeah, the recruiter said it was a rough program, but it's been well worth it. Okay, so now you're a full-fledged technician. <laughs> you're on top of the world. But you must have had a, a few problems along the way. What about Sue? One question. Who's she going out with tonight? All right, then. I'll bet boot camp was rough. Oh, come on, Larry. It wasn't that bad, now that I think back on it. As I remember, you looked sharp in that uniform, too, when you came home. And believe me, Sue really noticed it. Where did you go after your leave, Bill? Wasn't it somewhere in the south, to school or something? That's right. That's where I really got moving. U.S. Naval Guided Missile School at Dam Neck, Virginia. It was my home for a year. I met the fellows I'd be rooming with when I was assigned to my bearings. Ed was from Pennsylvania, and John was from Minnesota. You know, it was almost like going to a college campus. The room was great, and Ed even had a portable television set, but that was just the beginning. Plenty of fun, plenty to do, but within a few days, I was up to my ears in the school. Good morning, men. I'm Chief Hines. This is Petty Officer Britton. I'd like to welcome you to the Guided Missile School. During your stay here, you're going to get an education that's second to none. During the next 26 weeks, you will concentrate on electronics, electricity, and computers. It's going to take lots of hard work. Petty Officer Britton and I will be with you during your entire stay in A school. We're available for anything, either in school work or anything personal. The fact that you're here, though, means that you have the capability to go all the way. But it's up to you to use it. One more thing. See these dolphins? They don't come easy. But they'll come to mean a lot to you as you go through the program. You'll want them so bad you can taste it. But I promise you this. When you get them, you're in. You'll know you're part of the team. We really learned a lot in guided missile school. After some theory classes, we moved into studying computers how their circuits worked, and even testing them using the most modern oscilloscopes. We built our own circuits. Some of them were like those used in the Polaris missile. The instructors, you couldn't help but learn from those guys, and were my classmates sharp. They wanted to get on a Polaris submarine, and they were willing to work for it. All the courses had the same goal, to teach a complete understanding of the fundamentals of electronics. Take computers. Not only did we build the components and learn how they worked, we were even taught how to use computer math and to write programs for them. Another interesting course was inertial guidance, the system used to guide a Polaris missile to its target. Radar, sonar, missile systems, we covered all the related subjects. It was just like walking into another world, and it took some midnight oil to keep up. To qualify for this school, I extended my enlistment for two years. I didn't mind, though. I knew I was getting an education comparable to a basic college electrical engineering course. And besides, there was enough time left over for a little socializing. The weapon system is now in its final 10 second count. Our introduction to the advanced launch. missile course was a simulated Man. Polaris launch. Nine, from an actual missile eight, tube filled with water. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, launch. From that point on, everything we worked on was the actual Polaris submarine equipment. There she was. The A3 Polaris missile, the latest model in the series. As a missile technician, my job was to learn everything about the A3 and its launch system, how to operate it, how to repair it, and how to keep it ready for action. 
quite a job. It weighs 30,000 pounds and has a range of 2,500 nautical miles. There is an actual missile launch tube at the school, exactly like the 16 tubes on a submarine. We learned all the systems associated with launch from the lower level up to the deck. On the lower level, it was the rocket steam system used to push the missile up to the surface. On the second level, we learned the launch control panels, the launch system checkout procedures, practice working on the missile's second stage engines, hydraulics, pneumatics, mechanical systems, electrical circuits. It was all part of the job. On the third level, we worked on the missile, changing the guidance systems and checking the umbilical cord which supplies the missile with electrical power, guidance inputs, and temperature control until the moment of launch. Top side, there was the hatch that swings open for each missile tube. This was part of our job too, learning how to equalize pressures in the tube so that the hatch can be swung open deep beneath the sea, knowing how to work on the complicated hydraulic mechanical systems. But the most interesting training was when we were given simulated problems in the system. The missile countdown would be started and then the instructor would insert a fault in the launch system or the missile itself. There would be problems like those occurring on a submarine and we'd track them down. Of course, missile technician wasn't the only rate associated with the Polaris missile system. After basic school, some of the fellows became either fire control or electronics technicians. The fire control technician works with the sophisticated computers that gather information and transmit instructions to the missile's guidance system, where the ship is, how far to fly, where the target is, all the information necessary for a successful flight. Not only must he maintain the computers, he is the man who is actually operating the missile control console during countdown. Here too, practice countdowns are run and simulated problems inserted. The FT must know how to switch to alternate systems and move on through the countdown, or if necessary, locate and correct the problem. With a thorough knowledge of the system, he knows where to look for the trouble and he can locate the faulty module rapidly, replace it, and be back in business ready for launch. Electronics technicians specialize in such things as the ship's inertial navigation system. This system allows a Polaris submarine to travel for months beneath the surface and know its position every single moment. You can see the importance of this. To hit a target, you must know exactly where you are at the moment of launch. They also specialize in the main computer system the computer that ties all the various navigation systems together to verify the ship's position. Its memory banks even contain celestial information to tell the star tracking periscope where to look for the stars. Like the missile and fire control technicians, it's not just knowing how to operate things, it's knowing how to solve problems. That year at Guided Missile School was great, a lot like going to college. I made my rate as a missile technician and I knew I'd learned enough to be mighty valuable to the Navy. Now I was a petty officer third class. This meant an increase in pay and I qualified for proficiency pay too by extending my enlistment for another year. Best of all though, I was one step closer to getting those dolphins. Next stop, submarine school at New London, Connecticut. That's where I saw my first submarines. They weren't Polaris ships, but still, while I was here at the submarine school, I would go out on one and make my first dive. I was put in a class of sailors with all kinds of rates, from machinist mate to quartermaster. But all of us had one thing in common. We were working to be submariners. During the eight weeks at New London, I learned about every job on a submarine. They're so interrelated, so important, that each man is completely dependent on the others, and there's no room for mistakes. When you understand the other fellow's job, you can work together better. Train board. Train board, sir. Very well, submerge the ship. Dive, dive. Make it up 100 feet. Make it up 100 feet, 8 degree down the line. That's the right, sir. 8 degree down the line, sir. 
first crack at the diving and surfacing controls using a realistic trainer and you know I was pretty good of course the instructor had a lot to do with that he was tops and like all the other instructors he was a submariner they all made sure we knew the score even off duty the instructors took the time to show us everything about submarines even going into their history and traditions I wasn't a submariner yet, but I was beginning to feel the spirit behind those dolphins, and I knew I wanted to be a part of it. Then there was the diving tank. That grabbed you, swimming up to the surface from 50 feet deep. Every submarine is constructed with escape hatches, so you learn how to use them. At first I was scared, but once I tried it, I was ready to go again. But the high point of the school the absolute stopper was the day we spent on an actual submarine. We made several dives with the regular crew. Those guys are real pros, and I began to really see what I was shooting for. I lucked out and finished submarine school at the top of my class. That's when Sue came up to visit me along with my parents. She really looked good. You know, I think my father was kind of impressed when I told him I was assigned to a Polaris submarine scheduled to operate from an advanced base in Rota, Spain. Think of that. Missile technician, third class, Bill Baker of the USS Lewis and Clark. I came home for a week after that, remember? <laughs> Do I? We really had a fall. That's when you and Sue sort of started going together, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. You know, tonight will be the first time I've seen her since that week. Of course, we've written to each other a lot. Say, remember how surprised her mother was when I fixed her TV set? <laughs> yeah, you made quite an impression. You better watch out, buddy. She's liable to start thinking you view as good son-in-law material. Oh, no, not me. Bill, I've been thinking about learning computers and all in that school in Virginia. I work with a computer at the bank, and it, it's interesting. I'd like to know more about them. Sounds like a, a good way to learn, in the Navy, I mean. It is, no doubt about it, and a submarine is the place to do it. You really worked hard. How'd it go when you're at the sub? Well, after I reported to the Charleston Naval Base, the first thing I did was go look at a Polaris submarine. I was surprised by its size. Longer than a football field and as heavy as a light cruiser. My crew, the Blue Crew, was just starting their rest and recreation phase. As it turned out, this was a good deal for me. At the off-crew training center, my division crew chief got me started with my qualification card. It listed the various systems on our submarine, how they operated, and where the valves, piping, and wiring are located. I really needed to know my ship, fore and aft, before I could get my dolphins. There is also a special deal for Polaris submariners who want to take college courses during their off-duty time. It's called Polaris University. On patrol, a man can study and watch filmed lectures. The professors from places like Harvard and the University of South Carolina also come to the off-crew training center to teach classes and give exams. You can complete two years of college this way, not just engineering, but other required subjects like English and history. I met some of my crew, too. Got a taste of how the bachelors spend their off-duty time after a patrol. And it's okay. Cars, sunshine, relaxing, everything that goes with it. Well, what with extra submarine pay and specialty pay for rates like mine? They do all right. My crew went into its off-crew training period. 
I was worked in as a member of the weapons team. Torpedo men, fire control techs, and missile techs like me are called weaponeers. Just like back at Damneck, we practice teamwork using equipment exactly like that on our submarine. Only now the problems are more complex. Also, we learn new procedures, new equipment, and solve problems like those recently met on operating submarines. This off-crew training period before every patrol keeps you on your toes and up to date. Off-crew members also receive advanced technical training in their fields. New guys like me get a chance to get into the equipment and get some practical experience. On patrol, the whole effort is to keep all equipment ready for action on a moment's notice. If something does go wrong, the best qualified men on board go after it, and that's the way it should be. Almost before I knew it, it happened. The day I'd been aiming toward for over a year and a half, reporting aboard the USS Lewis and Clark, a Polaris submarine. That ship has enough nuclear power to travel around the world underwater. Going aboard was like running on the football field for the first game of the year. You look forward to it, but you get butterflies wondering if you're going to make the grade. Well, I'd soon know. You know, one thing that impressed me, within a week, the captain had me up to his cabin to welcome me aboard. And he gave me a lot to think about, too. Baker, you ought to do well. Just remember that every man on this boat is a volunteer for submarine duty. We're all here because we want to be here. And that means we must depend on each other. Based on a review of your record, you obviously have the ability, and your school standings reflect your effort. Now all you have to do is accept the challenge and do the job. If you have the right attitude, if you're a worker, you'll become a solid member of the crew. Hope so, sir. One thing you should remember, you're doing a very important job for your country. The missiles on this ship represent more firepower than all of that used by all the armed forces in World War II. We can strike any target in the world. The Polaris system has been proven. Many Polaris missiles have been launched from a submerged submarine, including one with a nuclear warhead. This strength and this readiness provides a powerful deterrent, which we hope and pray will prevent any potential enemy from launching an attack. When we're on patrol, it's under fully ready conditions. Maintaining this readiness requires considerable effort on the part of each of us, but it is necessary for the protection of our country. Sir. Before long, we were on our way, submerging for a two-month patrol that would end in our advanced operating base in Spain. Not until then would we surface again. A Polaris patrol is a long, tough 60 days, but it's good experience, and I really enjoyed it. I was amazed at how roomy and livable a Polaris submarine could be. We have foam rubber mattresses, pillows, and sheets just like home. We made our water and even our air from seawater. Now that's really something considering there are 135 men on board. I had a picture of Sue along wrote her a lot of letters and saved them till I could get to a post office. The food? You wouldn't believe it. I'd always heard that submariners ate like kings, and they do. Plenty of milk and ice cream and even milkshakes, plus chicken, turkey, steaks, and home-baked bread every day. Those cooks are okay in my book. Most of my off-watch time was spent learning the ship. A major responsibility for a new man is to qualify. He must do this before he can work full-time on his own specialty. The captain was right about the crew. They all helped me out. I guess they could see I wanted to learn. Those guys are pros, and I don't think they'd bother with a guy who wouldn't put out a little extra effort. I wanted those dolphins, but it's hard to qualify on your first patrol. Of course, I took some time out to relax. We have enough film on board to have a different Hollywood feature for every night on the patrol. We have things like bingo once a week, weightlifting, a little off-key singing, coax anytime you feel like it. I tell you, life under the sea is okay. We have a lounge for cards, games, and things like that, complete with piped-in music. 
You've got to go after things by yourself on a submarine, digging out information on your own. They figure you for a man, and brother, you'd better measure up to it. When I wasn't learning the ship, I was standing watches. I particularly enjoyed that, being right there in the control center for the whole submarine. I put in some time working with the missile system, got my hands on the equipment, checking it for proper operation. But like I said, the main job for every man was to keep the equipment in a perfect state of readiness so that we could launch missiles on a moment's notice. Toward the end of the patrol, I got a real jolt. My division chief recommended me for qualification tests. An officer and a chief petty officer questioned me on every part of the ship. I'd studied hard, did the best I could, and made the grade. They're really something, Larry. I wouldn't trade them for the world. I can see why, Bill. You have put a lot into them. Now what are your plans? Are you going to stay in when your time's up? I don't know yet. There are a lot of good reasons why I should. I'm getting a terrific education. I'm sure I can move on up the ladder. As it stands now, I'm making good money. I'm going up for second class soon. Shoot, I could even get married if I wanted to. <laughs> Remember, I said if I wanted to. Yeah, I hear you talking. Say, look at the time. If we don't hurry up, you're not going to have anybody to talk to about getting married. Let's get a move on. Hey, look what I got, Sue. Great. Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill, I'm so glad you're home. And I just love my little dolphins. And everything you've been telling us sounds awfully exciting. But what I really want to know is, have you actually ever fired one of those missiles yourself? Well, I never launched a real one. But we do practice a lot on the sea trials just before we go out. And we make it as realistic as possible, launching slugs of water from missile tubes. Well, didn't your submarine ever fire a missile? Oh, yes. Before I came aboard, they fired one down the Atlantic Missile Range. And every new Polaris submarine has to launch missiles during its shakedown operations. It's really something to see that missile shoot out of the water and blast off. They say it makes you mighty proud to be the man behind the missile. A real professional.